Hi, everyone. We're kicking off this week with our special series of bite-sized talks that are focused on NF Core pipelines. Thank you all for joining us. And I'd also like to thank the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative for supporting our events so far and more that are to come in the near future. So Leon Bickman is the first speaker in the series, and he will be presenting the NF Core MHC Quant pipeline that is targeted at data-driven peptidomics to us today. While Leon is currently working at Biotech, uh, BioNTech, he will be presenting work that he carried out at the University of Tübingen in Germany. We really appreciate that you've taken the time to join us today, Leon. Over to you. Uh, thanks. I hope uh, the sound is working fine. Um, yes, so uh, thank you for uh, inviting me today to uh, present the <clears throat> NF Core image sequence pipeline that uh, we constructed during my PhD time in Tübingen. And yeah, it's a it's a pipe. It's an automated pipeline to analyze um, mass spectrometry data for the discovery of, of epitopes that can be used for the design of vaccines. And one second, and I'll um, structure this talk in three parts. So I'll recapitulate some background on cancer immunotherapy and mass spectrometry. Then I'll go in, in depth into the steps, the most important steps of the image sequence pipeline. And then at last, I'll also give a little um, future outlook of what could be done in the future now that I'm done with my PhD. So let's start with the background. So this is um, a basic, uh, very basic image of um, T-cell-based adaptive immunity. And this is only one branch of the immune system, but that was the part that we were interested in. And um, what's happening here is that uh, T cells of the immune system are controlling basically all the cells in our body. And they do this by um, checking upon one um, cell surface protein complex called MHC. And this, uh, it's called the major histocompatibility complex. And on top of this complex, there are little peptide fragments presented and they represent breaking pieces of all the protein content of a given cell. So if there's something wrong inside that cell, maybe a viral infection or a cancerous protein that is normally not there, then the T cells can recognize this from the peptides, the epitopes and engage into a cytotoxic activity and kill the, kill the respective malignant cell. And this is not only uh, a comic, you can also visualize this in real life, for example, using electron microscopy. And this is being exploited, for example, for cancer immunotherapy by comparatively analyzing tumor and normal tissues by taking biopsies of a patient and then using whatever methods one has available from sequencing, transcriptomics, and also MHC uh, mass spectrometry, and then really trying to find out which are the MHC epitopes that are only presented by the tumor tissue. And those ones can then serve as candidate epitopes for a vaccine cocktail that would stimulate the cancer patient's immune system against its own tumor. And the MHC quant pipeline has focused only on the bottom part here. So the identification of MHC epitopes from mass spectrometry data. To give you a bit more of a feeling of what kind of data we're dealing with here. So what one usually does in the, in the lab is to take tissue samples, homogenize this into a solution, then immunochromatography pur purify the MHC complexes. There are two different classes, MHC1 and 2. And upon elution of the peptides from the complexes, one can spike these solutions directly into the MS instrument and measure this. And nowadays, mass spectrometers are really high throughput instruments. So you can automatically sample from a box of vials and measure hundreds of thousands of MS runs in, in rather short timeframes. I'm talking about weeks or months still, but it's, it's possible. And therefore we need this new, highly 
parallelized processing methods to, to process all the, the data that we're aggregating from these instruments that are in mass spectrometry data is really complex to analyze. So this is where the MHC quant workflow came into place. And um, I'm gonna tell you now about what's going on inside the pipeline. First of all, here, a bit of an abstract overview over the, the architecture. So like all NF core pipelines, you have in the center processes that are carried out from software libraries. And in this case, we used primarily the, the OpenMS software library for uh, computational mass spectrometry. And as you can imagine, like a toolbox of Lego blocks to, to stack together specific applications for very specific use cases in mass spectrometry. And we combined this with third party tools outside of the library and also some things that were not available, we scripted into Python and R and also included this into processes. All of this is then nicely containerized using Docker and Singularity or other methods that are provided by the NF core template. And this can then be run using this next flow workflow system pretty much on any system and it's highly reproducible. So here you see a, a rough sketch of the pipeline and you can see there are really um, quite some steps going on, 35 different steps and they're all interlinked with each other in, in different ways. And if we just focus on the five most important ones, I'm gonna guide you through this step-by-step step now. So what's happening most importantly in the first stage is a protein database search is carried out using the, the search engine Comet. And uh, we chose this, this well-established search engine because uh, we did a, it's, it's a, first of all, it's a very simple and fast scoring method. It, it has um, no triptic bias for unspecific, unspecifically cleaved peptides like um, the MHC peptides are. So in Proteo makes you deal with other types of peptides and comment it does not have that bias. And when we did a, a benchmark comparing a variety of different tools here in our um, results, it seemed like Comet was finding most peptides. On the bottom, you see the number of peptides on average. And on the top, you see the percentage of identified MHC binders. And while the, the ratio was always the same, the number of peptides was higher for Comet. And the only other um, similar performing tool was Peaks. However, this software is a licensed tool, so we couldn't use it here. We also verified these additionally identified peptides comparing their retention time properties on the x-axis. You have the measured retention time on the y-axis, their predicted retention time from sequence. And here we're seeing that those peptides uniquely identified by the Comet MHC quant workflow were nicely correlating here. Whereas looking into random peptides, decoy peptides, you would see them scattering all over the place. So this raised also the confidence in these uniquely identified ones. So as a next step, um, a classical thing in proteomics is carried out the false discovery rate. And um, we're, using, we're using here a, a bit more of an advanced method called percolator. Um, and if you want to know all the details about it, I really recommend you reading the paper here from Lucas Kell, Nature Methods 2007. It is um, in contrast to the, the classical approach of simply computing the false discovery rate by looking at uh, a univariate target decoy distribution. Here, um, it is um, uh, a multivariate separation is achieved by um, an iterative machine learning approach where um, the, the spectrum matches are um, compared by a variety of different scores and then an iterative pro process, the, the discrimination between target and decoy distribution is um, achieved in a better way. So the next step, um, the retention time along all the peptides is corrected. And this is another problem one encounters in mass spectrometry measurements that across different measurements, the retention time is slightly deviating. And this is 
being corrected in the pipeline using an OpenMS specific tool called NetAligner Identification. And that basically aligns all the peptides to one central reference. And also this one we verified by looking at two very different um, MS runs in terms of the retention properties. And you can see the deviation was corrected to nearly zero across the entire range after applying this tool. So finally, we get to the part where MHC quant gets a second name from quant. So every peptide is also associated with a quantity. And this is carried out using a, a targeted chromatogram extraction approach. So each peptide identification is located not only at an MS2 level, but also an MS1 level. And then the corresponding chromatograms are integrated and the, the sum of the uh, signal intensity area under this curve represents um, the quantity that can be compared. And again, we went into the lab and also uh, verified this. So looking into um, the signal intensities of 57 spiked in peptides that were diluted in a linear series, we were also observing this linear decay in signal intensity. So again, we made sure that this quantification works quite reliable. Finally, an MHC affinity prediction is carried out. And um, here we applied to open source modern neural network arch architectures called MHC Flurry and MHC Nuggets. And we chose these uh, predictors among all the, the variety of predictors out there since they were completely open source and not licensed. And um, we were very happy with, with the working of these tools and they um, included a variety of MHC alleles. And in, in benchmarks that were out there, they were actually performing quite similar to, to the well-established license tools as well. So with this, I'm already at the end of the talk and I'll uh, give you a bit of a future outlook what could be done in, uh, with this pipeline next. So um, one thing has been done already by Marisa Duppelhaar, who recently joined University of Tübingen and uh, did a great job of porting MHC quant to DSL2. So this was really an essential step, I would say, to, to continue the development of this pipeline. Um, but other things have been happening too. And uh, it has been shown, for example, that intensity predictions massively improve um, identification rates of, of these kind of peptides. So this is definitely something that should be included here in the future. And also the mass spec instruments are developing currently at high speeds. So it would be also, I think, a, a great thing to add to this pipeline in the future to make it possible to include ion mobility data, for example, or data independent acquisition um, based methods. But we will have to see how this will be continued. So thank you very much for your attention. And that was already it. And I'm also um, still including here the <laughs> acknowledgement of uh, all these people that helped me by um, creating the pipeline. So I really had a, a lot of support, not only for the pipeline, also throughout my PhD. So for this, I'm also very grateful here.